previously on Haunted. That's Melissa Black, Mark Rawlington's girlfriend. It's like there's noise and no noise at the same time. Like you almost can't hear it, not with your ears, but you feel it. Where is the signal broadcasting from? So where is the fourth member of their little crew? He said that you could sort of drown it out with loud music. I've had headphones glued to my head for days, blasting the heaviest stuff I can find, but it only slows it down. Who is stalking the town disguised as a clown? Is that another victim of the signal? He lost his friend a couple of years ago. She uh, drowned at Victoria Lake. That's actually why he decided to become a policeman. Where's the doctor? Nobody can reach him. Listen to me. Hold on to her. Oh, really? I was thinking of letting go. It's the same symbol as before. And I think it's... I think it's painted in blood. Haunted, the audio drama. Episode 1 The Signal Part 4 of 6 Written by Jamie Evans Take a photo of it on your thingy. Thingy? The phone thingy, I presume you have one. You don't have one? No, as it happens. How do you phone people? I have this. Oh my god, that is a brick. You're a weird guy. Anyone ever tell you that? They never stop. Hang on. Right, I'll send that to the boys in the lab. I also need you to send it to Dr Harry Backman. He's a professor of symbology at Cambridge University. And why would I send this to someone who isn't police? Because you want answers. I'm sure your lab guys are very good at analysing hair and skin samples, but the symbol looks Celtic to me. And there's no bigger expert of Celtic symbology in the UK than Dr. Backman. <sighs> OK. I'll send it. Did you hear that? Oh, what are you going to do now? Get out the thingy with the buzzing lights? It's called a K2 meter. And no, those detect electromagnetic fields, not noises. Ooh, pardon me for getting the equipment wrong. You're right. That was probably a poltergeist throwing something around, right? Don't worry. I know what to do. I've seen the movie. Go into the light, Carol Ann! You don't like me much, do you? What gave me away? Hmm. It's one thing for you to have made yourself into a laughing stock, but now you're taking a woman who I happen to be very fond of with you. She came to me. And you should have sent her away. You're a grown fucking man! Or maybe that's the point. Maybe you like the fangirls. She's certainly a good one. Pretty girl telling you that you're the hero. Maybe that's the only thing that really gets you off. That lets you forget what a complete and utter waste your life is otherwise. How do you even sleep at night? Usually carried away to a dreamless oblivion by the smooth, dark concoction of one Mr Jack Daniels. I may well have wasted my life. Maybe I'm doing the wrong thing bringing Abigail along. But don't you ever suggest what you were about to suggest just then. Or you'll do what? Stay behind me. Ah! Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm seeing a clown holding an axe and covered in a fair amount of blood. I really wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> All right, stay right there. I've had enough shit for one day without a fucking clown making things worse. Put down the axe. I'm taking you down to the station for questioning. <laughs> I don't think he's respecting your authority. I mean it, sir. Put down the axe. Why don't you pull your gun? This isn't America. I usually disagree, but now would seem like a really good time for us to have a gun. <laughs> I am arresting you in connection with an arson and possible murder earlier this evening. I think we need to retreat. Final warning. That axe looks very sharp. <laughs> Sir, I... That's enough. Run. Ah, Jesus, he almost hit us. This way. Lock the door with something. That's not going to hold him for long. I'd better work quickly then. Here, plug that in over there. What are you doing with a radio? Testing a theory. Now, let's turn up the volume. 
Hold it right there, Chuckles. Listen to that. Can you hear it? No. Okay. Uh, let's keep searching. What are you doing? Listen for it. That sound in your head. Listen to it. Repeating the signal. What is it saying? <laughs> what are you doing? Cover your ears. What? Why? <laughs> Cover them. <laughs> What the hell was that? I think I've isolated the frequency that the signal is broadcasting on. Wait, so are we now infected with this thing? I don't think so. We found the broadcast frequency, but nothing was broadcasting. Then why did he react? I don't think the signal is controlling these people. Quite the opposite, actually. Mark Rawlinson talked about killing his parents like he was trying to protect them from the signal. Not that the signal told him to do it. I think they're very afraid of it. God, it was lucky we were able to find it. I don't think it was just luck. What do you mean? I'm not quite sure yet. I'm still formulating. Dear, don't worry. Just go back to sleep. Mr Hunter is going to fix all of this. She's restless. Abigail, I said she's restless. Hardly surprising. Are you still playing the music for her? Yes, of course. She's absolutely freezing cold and she keeps muttering stuff in her sleep. The infection, or whatever it is, it must be advancing. What are you looking at? Mum, did you do any research on this town before we moved here? What do you mean, research? Did you look into, like, crime statistics and just weird shit? Well, no, I didn't. To be quite honest, honey, I was so desperate to get away from your father after everything and the job was such a good offer. I just accepted it. Took a leap of faith, I suppose. Well, look at this. There are an unusual number of disappearances in a town this size, going back to the last three years or so. It's hard to tell when this all began, but the earliest case I found so far is the one here, three years ago. A young woman named Robin Dempsey just disappears without a trace. She's never found. Then, a few months later, Heather Irving, same story. Over the last three years, 22 people have gone missing. Mostly young women, though a couple of young men are sprinkled in there. They're never seen or heard from again. No crime scene, no bodies, no clues. So these are all just unsolved crimes sitting in police files? So far as I can tell, yes. There doesn't seem to be much of a connection, though, other than they all go missing in town. The victims don't know each other or they don't run in the same circles. What's this part here you've marked in red? For some reason, the disappearance is completely stopped for about six months between November last year and April of this year. Do you think it has something to do with this strange signal you told me about? I don't know. It doesn't seem to make sense, though. The victims of the signal get so violent, they leave such a spectacle. They don't just disappear quietly. I think there's something else. Something that led to all of this. But there's still the question as to why Mark and Jay were affected so much more quickly by it than Melissa is. Maybe she's a fighter. Maybe. Hello? Abigail? Yeah, it's me. I'll make us some tea, dear. I'll be right back. Did you find the doctor? No, he's missing. We did find our killer clown friend, though. Really? Yes. He tried to kill us with an axe. Are you both okay? Yeah, we're fine. Listen, we need to find a way to stop this thing broadcasting. Were you able to find any information on which radio transmitters cover this town? Well, there's a main one on South Vale. It's where the Greenvale radio broadcasts from. Their transmitter covers the entire town. The police station probably has a transmitter for radio contact. There's the old radio factory... Wait, what? 
It's been abandoned for years, James. Derelict. Used to manufacture radios there back in the day. Could be worth checking out. Abigail, I've developed a theory. A theory? I think this strange signal is somehow using its victims to amplify and boost its strength. In effect, using them as walking, talking signal boosters. They're like mini antennae. How did you figure that out? It's just a theory at this point, but I figured if the noise is persistently humming around their head, then it must be inside there somewhere. I was able to find the frequency of the signal, and it seemed to agitate our clown friend. I think because he's become sensitive to that frequency. You think you can use that somehow? Maybe. We're going to the radio station. I'm going to try and see if there's any way to trace the signal. Be careful. You too. Mm. Hey, are you okay? Melissa? Melissa, can you hear me? Oh, I pulled the headphones out of her ears, but she didn't wake up. Looking at her closely, she didn't look good. She was covered in a sheen of sweat. Her skin was the colour of rancid milk and the skin beneath her eyes were like dark bruises. As I looked closer at her exposed arms, I could see dark veins beneath the surface, as if the skin was becoming translucent. I thought she was breathing a little fast for somebody at rest. But then again, I wasn't a doctor. No. No, no. No. Melissa, it's all right. I'm here. James and Dan are out there now. They're trying to find the source of this. I jumped as the sound of static bloomed, filling the basement room. Where the hell was it coming from? There was a pile of boxes shoved in one corner. Stuff from the old house we hadn't got round to unpacking or throwing away yet. Rummaging beneath old blankets and toys from my childhood, I found the source of the noise. An old star radio? But it wasn't plugged in! This was impossible! How could it be playing if there was no power supplied to it? Oh, here goes. The radio was broken, the aerial snapped clean off, the plastic casing smashed and half the inner workings hanging out. How it had it been picking up a signal at all without a power source? Ha! Batteries! Two double A's had been left in the machine. But I hadn't used this radio in years. How would these batteries even still have a charge? Either way, I was pulled from my musing as Melissa began to stir on the bed. Hello? It's me, Melissa. I'm here. My mouth is dry. Can I have some water? Of course. Here you go, but slowly. Thanks. How are you feeling? My head feels like it's going to explode. I'm not sure if that's this thing or if it's the music I've been listening to for hours. Probably a bit of both. Listen, Melissa, we aren't sure why, but the signal is affecting you more slowly than it did Mark. By this point, Mark was hallucinating, seeing a damp patch spreading on his ceiling and writing out all of these symbols. Jay had something similar. You spoke to Jay? Only briefly. The day we found out about Mark, he phoned me. He was raving and ranting on and on about what a terrible mistake we'd all made. He kept talking about water too. He kept saying that the taps in his bathroom kept turning themselves on, but that the water smelled dirty. He was really afraid of it. He didn't want to be anywhere near water. Uh, And then what? I don't know. He hung up and I couldn't get in touch with him again. I was a little distracted, I admit. I'd been feeling the effect by then. Just a little. I, I wasn't seeing things at that point, but I was hearing things and and I just couldn't stop drawing. Drawing? The symbols. Every piece of paper I could find. If there wasn't any paper, I would scratch them into the wall using one of my mum's knitting needles. I couldn't stop myself. What do the symbols mean? Do, do you know? No, I don't. When you draw them, it's like... It is as if your hand moves independently of you. Like a possession? I suppose so. But you haven't had any hallucinations? None at all? None, I swear. Reality is reality. So you're aware of where you are and why you're here? Yes. I went to the police station in hysterics. I was bleeding because in my hysteria I'd attempted to cut off my ear. You brought me back here and had to tie me up because of the effects of the signal... I am currently still tied to that bed in the basement of an old church. No visions, no damp patches, no ghosts. There's just us three. Three? You, me and the ghost hunter guy. James isn't here, Melissa. He went to find Dr. Bard. Then who is the man standing right behind you? What? 
There's nobody here, Melissa. He's looking right at me. Why is he not blinking? Abigail, tell him to stop staring at me. Melissa, where? There's nobody here. No, no! Stay away! Stay away! Melissa, hold still! Melissa, you're going to hurt yourself! Melissa! No! No, no! Melissa? Uh, Melissa! Melissa, you're freezing cold. Ooh, that was another spooky tune that you can shake your bones to. The days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. As we approach the most spooky of times, Halloween is right around the corner. And every night until then, you will be in the good hands of me, DJ Ghoul, playing the beats that give you the creeps all night long. Up next, my main man Alice Cooper gets jiggy with the cemetery crowd in I Love the Dead. <laughs> Okay, I've got a few songs queued up for them. You guys have got me for a couple of minutes. How can I help? This radio tower. How many different presenters broadcast from here? Come again? It's a simple question, Jerome. It's DJ Gore in here, my friend. Well, truth is, we've been running a little light lately. Lots of folk calling sick, you know. I figured something nasty is going around. So that's why the station has a horror-themed DJ playing so early in the evening. People love to be spooked, man. What can I say? You aren't looking too good there yourself, Jerome. Like I said, it's been stressful. I spend half the night hosting my show and then producing the breakfast show. These co-workers of yours, they all got sick around the same time? Some sort of mysterious illness? Yeah, man, it was just like in a zombie movie, you know? Everyone in the town suddenly getting the flu. Turns out it ain't the flu. Ah, oh, man, what if I'm liking that other movie? You know, the one with the radio DJ and the zombies outside. You know it. I can't remember what it's called. Obviously you broadcast from here, but do you have any instruments here capable of picking up a radio signal? Yeah, of course. We use walkie-talkies and we have a PA system in the building. That works on a radio frequency. You mean to tell me that this entire building is rigged with speakers that could pick up a radio signal at any moment? Well, yeah, I guess. Wonderful. Look, Jerome, have you heard any strange broadcasts recently? Any unusual signals? Um, well... What? What? I haven't heard of myself, but I heard a couple of my colleagues mentioning that he picked up something strange. It's probably just kids messing around, though. These are the same colleagues who are off sick? Yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ. How many people in the town have been affected? What is going on? Trust me, it's better that you don't know. I'm going to need access to your programming board, any spare equipment you have, and your radio tower. Like hell. What do you need all that for? I have an idea. A plan. I'm a man with a plan. <laughs> me with a plan. Now that's a scary thought. You know, you really instill me with confidence when you're drinking. We both agree that the human body is capable of acting like an inefficient sort of aerial, yes? Do we? Oh yeah, that's totally true. Like if you place your car keys under your chin and press the beeper, it extends the range of the signal to unlock your car. How do you know that? We do a daily weird fact as part of the show. We're going to use that. Just like at the house with the clown. We'll open the same broadcast channel and create a feedback loop that will pick up anyone that already has the signal running through their heads. That way we'll have an idea of how many people are infected. Like uh, a city-wide radar? Exactly. Okay, so what do you need me to do? Nothing here. I have a different job for you. DJ Gould, if you'd be so kind, please can you show me to your electrical storage room? Deputy Dan? Still not a deputy. I need you to do some detective work back at the police station. I need to know more about Mark Rawlinson and his friends. I need to know why the signals seem to affect them so much more quickly than Melissa. Go through the rest of Mark's diary, interview anyone who knew him, whatever you need to do. Okay, I'm on it. Okay, I'm, I'm about to go back on air. <clears throat> Hello, Fred fans. That was Alice Cooper, followed by the hypnotic beats of the beat freak Somebody's Watching Me. Do you ever feel like somebody's watching you? I sure know I do. When I'm all alone and I feel the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Oh man. Halloween is right around the corner. And I've got you guys all night long. And... Uh... What is that? It seems, folks, that we have a call in. Hello, caller. You are live with DJ Ghoul. Please, do not swear. What's bugging you this evening? <laughs> Can the ghost...
ghost hunter come out to play? <laughs> the ghost what? He means me. You. You can't stop it. The signal. You shouldn't. <laughs> and why's that? Because of what it is. And what's that? Truth. That's all. Pure, unadulterated, unfiltered, not sugar-coated or artificially sweetened. Just truth. The only truth that matters. <laughs> Enlighten me. <laughs> cheater, cheater, compulsive. Drinker. <laughs> the signal was a gift to me. To us all. I'm helping people accept the gift. Those who are having a bit of trouble. <laughs> We're all going to die, James, all of us. It is inevitable. We will all die and be forgotten, and there will be nothing. There's no point to living. It's cruel, really. So I'm helping people. How can you call what you've done helping people? I'm helping them end, as I too must end. Dr. Bard, is that you? <laughs> Bard? Bard was weak. Bard killed himself as soon as he heard it. Weakling. <laughs> you were so close to his body before, James. I guess I must have distracted you. My bad. <laughs> He's in the basement of his house, swinging from a rafter if you get my drift. <laughs> you listen to me. I am going to put a stop to this. Do you understand me? I'm going to trace the signal to its source and stop whomever is broadcasting it. We're all broadcasting, James. Every molecule of reality is broadcasting. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You'll know my pain soon. You'll know the loss. What is that supposed to mean? My work must continue. Don't do this. But I'm already here. I've come a long way. Here. Where are you? Knock, knock. Tell me where you are. Knock, knock. Listen. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> oh, you're a bit early for Halloween, aren't you? No! Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter and Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin. With special guest Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, Harry McElroy, Edina Fisher Allen, Mark Smith, Michael Holliday. Narration by David Anthony Green. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Haunted, the audio drama, is created by Jamie Evans, with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges, Charles Topping and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios, with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next terrifying chapter of Haunted, the audio drama. Hi guys and gals, this is Jamie Evans, creator and half of the showrunning team for Haunted, the audio drama. I also play James Hunter in the show. We really hope you're enjoying the show and that you're feeling intrigued by the mysteries we're trying to set up. 
I don't want to take up much of your time. I'm sure you hear something similar to this at the end of every podcast or audio drama that you listen to. This is the part of the show where we beg you for your hard-earned money. We chose to release Haunted free of charge because we wanted as many people to hear it as possible. We have no plans to ever change that model, so please don't worry. The show will continue to release for free for the foreseeable future. However, it does cost us quite a lot of money to produce Haunted. Things like marketing budget, studio rental equipment costs, and of course paying for our performers makes the show very expensive to produce. So we've decided to set up a Patreon where fans of the show can donate a small amount of money to us each month if you choose to do so. We have two different donation tiers on our Patreon and these come with rewards including access to our Discord server, early access to episodes and access to a behind the scenes show where we talk about the process of making Haunted and the sorts of things that inspired the show. That literally doubles the amount of Haunted content that you will be receiving. If you could please consider donating so that we can continue the story of James and Abigail, we would be so grateful. Find us at patreon.com slash Impala Films. That's Impala spelled I-M-P-A-L-A. Patreon.com slash Impala Films. Thank you so much and see you next time.